single sign-on. So if you are a tech parent who has had boss logins, connect logins, housing logins, email logins, now it's all one thing. So that's great the Lord, right? Um, so when you click on the link that will be provided on our um, website, on the Residential Life, not Facebook, website, you'll see the link that's going to be posted there. Um, it will also be emailed out to your student, but not, we can't guarantee that it'll be emailed out before they go live. So just check that website. Um, you'll click on that link. You'll go there and you will use the, it's usually three numbers and three letters. Um, that's going to be their email address. And you'll use that to sign in. And then you'll have the same password that you check your email with. And that will be your login information and you'll sign into the portal. You'll get, then go to the tab that says move in appointments. Um, and there you'll go to a new screen that will show you your housing assignment and then it'll click that assignment. Then it'll take you to the available options that we have. Um, so we are going to have different time blocks um, open for all of our buildings so everybody can move in at the same time essentially, but we're just trying to limit the number of people that come in in certain little hour blocks. Um, so once you select that time that works best for your family and your, your moving needs, then you will receive an email confirmation that tells you what time it is. Um, and if you need to cancel that, we do ask that you cancel 24 hours before that scheduled time. Um, and then, you'll, of course, you'll have to go in and reschedule. Um, and I think Miss Emily may talk about what room changes may look like with this process. Um, so if something changes between now and Wednesday for your housing assignment, then you'll, or no, after Wednesday, then you'll need to go back in and change your time slot that you picked. Um, is it Emily or Barnell next, Miss Casey? Barnell? I think so. Okay, so now Barnell is going to go over our move in process with you guys. All right, thank you, Miss Lindsay. Um, I, I'm, Ms. I'm Barnell Anderson, and uh, like Miss Lindsay and Miss Casey said, I'm going to talk to you all about move in day. Um, so, of course, this is going to be a lot different than it's been in years prior just because everything is way different. Um, so, like Miss Lindsay just said, we are going by appointments this time, which is our first time to do it. Um, and this is being done to follow proper social distancing. So, basically, our move in days are from September 4th through September 8th. And so, you can schedule times as early as 8.30 on those days and as late as 4 p.m. on those days to move in. Um, and you can arrive at any time during your time slot. Um, the earlier the better, but we we have a range of number of people that can schedule per hour by building. Um, so just make sure you make it during your time. Um, and once you get, or before you get here actually, you'll receive uh, some information through email and it will contain where you can park. Um, and so what we do ask is that once you get here to campus that you go to the parking lot that you've been assigned more than likely it will be closest to your building and you'll have that spot for an hour to be able to, to move your things in or to, to move your son or daughter's things into their location. Um, and, and also once you, once you get here, a staff member is going to approach your car and basically what they'll do is scan a, a QR code, which will email you probably about a week or so before, um, before your move in day. And that will be basically is what checks you in and will also make sure that you receive the information you'll get later in terms of what things you need to fill out, what other useful tips and uh, things we have to give to your residents too. Um, and so from there, you'll get your key at that very, at that moment from that staff member and you'll go and start moving your things in. Um, and again, you'll have that spot for one hour and we're doing this just to, you know, make it fair for people who have time slots later so they can come and park too. Um, so if you do need to stay after that one hour, we, you will have to move. And what we ask is that, you know, if you're in the room, like still getting settled in or something like helping unpack that you, you know, avoid the common areas because, you know, we are keeping it safe for everyone else who's coming later and we are sanitizing in between all these time slots as well. So it's really important that we stay on track and wait and that we don't have people in areas when they're not supposed to be. So it's clean and healthy for everybody else that has to come. Um, also, we will provide a mask uh, and, as well as hand sanitizer for the resident checking in. And that's our way to welcome them to campus and just give them a keepsake, you know, and also something useful during these times to, to have. 
Um, and also we, we are required to wear a mask when we're out in public. And so when you come to campus, and this is of course current guidelines, when you come to campus, please bring a mask to wear. So when you're moving your resident in and, and, uh, and everything that we're not only that you're being safe, but we're keeping everyone else safe as well. Um, and I just, since it is related to moving day, someone, uh, oh, Ms. Lindsay answered that, so perfect. Um, so yeah, that's all I have. So back to Ms. Casey. Thank you, Mr. Warnell. Um, I think Ms. Emily's next. Yes. Hey, everyone. Um, I know Ms. Casey mentioned earlier today that we've gotten lots of emails and questions about um, possibly changing your student to a private bedroom. Um, mostly apartments is what's being requested. And we do currently have a waiting list for that. Um, I did email before this meeting, I emailed the last 25 people that had requested uh, not, I mean, a private bedroom apartment. Um, and I'm asking that they email me back with their top three building preferences, their roommate preference, if they have one um, by noon tomorrow. Um, that is a pretty fast turnaround. Um, usually we give a couple days, but I'm trying to get all these room changes completed before the um, appointments go live on Wednesday morning so that your student doesn't have to go back in and cancel their appointment and make a new one or things like that. So. Um, if, if your student had already requested um, a private bedroom, please tell them to check their tech email address. Um, if that is something that your student is interested in and they have not contacted us, feel free to email me. Um, Ms. Lindsay can put my email um, up there on the, on the, in the chat room. Um, and you're welcome to email me this evening. Like I said, I would need your student, your son or daughter's top three building preferences, whether it's University Park Phase 1, Phase 2, Park Place, um, or Legacy Park, um, and uh, if they have a roommate preference, um, I'd also need their roommate to send me an email giving me permission to move them, okay? Um, like I said, I can't guarantee that roommates, I can, I can make that request happen. I do have some four bedrooms that have two or more spaces open, at this time, I don't know that we have any two bedrooms open. We certainly don't have any whole two bedroom apartments open. Um, anybody that has requested suites at this time, I'll, I'm going to try to email those students in the morning with the couple of suite spaces that we have open. I don't think we have a lot. Um, and that has a very lengthy waiting list for those locations right now. So if your student is interested in um, one of the suites, they're welcome to email me as well that process is taking a little bit longer just because we don't have as many spaces coming open in the suites right now, okay? So hopefully that answered all your questions um, about those room changes. Um, I do wanna mention though, um, like I think Ms. Lindsay mentioned earlier, if you'd get a room change after Wednesday and after you've already booked your appointment, um, you would need to go back in there and, um, and rebook for your new location. So if, if, you, if your student emails to get a, a room change, I usually email them back to tell them that it has been completed. And I'm gonna try to remind everybody to go back in and, um, and rebook for their new location for a new appointment time for check-ins, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Emily. And we will um, give you guys an opportunity to ask any questions if you have any um, in just a moment. So like I said, I have a kind of a lengthy list of questions that were sent in, but these may be some questions you guys have. So um, let me let me start with that. Um, how many people will be allowed to help with move-in? So currently uh, we are allowing two people per resident to assist and enter the residential facilities for move-in. Um, and uh, that I have been asked, you know, several questions, you know, what if you have a younger, um, a younger child that needs to come with you, you know, you certainly don't want to leave them in the car, I understand all of that. I would just ask that you would consider, you know, um, making sure that our living environments are maintain their safety and maintain the health and make wise decisions in that area. Um, but we under, we're as much as possible, we're going to try to stick to the two people per resident entering in those facilities. Now, certainly, you know, if you bring, um, 
um, a few people with you. They can certainly stay out in the car or maybe they're unloading from the car onto, um, you know, a sidewalk and then another, you know, the two that are helping in that residential facility taking it up. Um, but just be, be mindful of that. If you have specific questions, please email me. Um, I've been receiving those and trying to help with some decisions being made there. But right now we're saying two people per resident to be able to move in. Um, I've also received the question, is it possible for roommates to move in on the same date and the exact same time? Um, we don't have anything set up within our, our, our um, booking of move-in appointments that would limit a roommate from choosing the same time. Um, I would just ask that you would be careful with that because if you, let's say you're in a two-person room, you have the two people moving in and then four people at most assisting, then you've got six people in a room. You can't maintain social distancing um, with that. And so we ask that you avoid that as much as possible, um, which is why, you know, we ask that you just be as quick as you can um, with entering those, those locations. Um, because those roommates are going to be living together for the year, we don't see that it's necessary to keep them from moving in or interacting with one another during their move in. But we just ask that you be mindful of that when you, um, if you enter into the same space together. Um, in the event that it is taking you longer than the hour to get everything settled, are we able to move our car from the designated spot for the next crew and just continue to work inside the room? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, I know that it is going to take longer than an hour to get everything set up in your room and in, in your students' rooms and get everything unpacked. Um, and so we encourage you to use that hour wisely. Um, you know, if you arrive, let's say your time slot is an 8.30 to 9.30 and you arrive at nine o'clock, that's fine, we're gonna get you checked in, it's within your window, um, but it means you only have that parking spot for 30 minutes, okay? And so um, we do have a window of time in between our appointments, like Mr. Burnell said, to be able to go in and clean, um, but and also to help us get, get um, cars moved, um, but you're only uh, guaranteed that spot closest to the building from 8.30 to 9.30. Um, and if you, um, you can certainly arrive at any time in there. I would think was that you would just get everything out of your car and you would have it there on the sidewalk. You know, typically when we offer dog call, that's what we do and then move it up to the room. So it's kind of a chain of events when we're moving. Um, but we know it'll take longer. Go ahead and, and make sure your car's moved out of your spot um, before the end of your time, so time slot and we're good there. Um, again, we ask that you don't congregate in hallways or any of our community areas. Um, in fact, during move-in, some of our community areas may be closed off if we can do that, if they're to the side, but we just ask that you stick as much to the room as you can when you're unpacking. Um, will parents be allowed to return to campus or to the rooms after the 8th to bring additional items, items forgotten? At this time, no. We are saying no visitation other than Louisiana Tech students right now. Um, of course, this was a decision we made prior to the governor's address on Saturday. And, you know, if we, um, if it continues the way it is, we may limit uh, visitation even even stricter. Um, currently, our summer students are not allowed any visitors other than those that are living on campus. Um, and so we may decide to do that as it gets closer to fall. Um, as you guys know, it changes every day um, with concerns and how we're having to address these. And so um, that could change before we move in for fall. But I don't want you to plan on being able to come back and enter those residential facilities. Sure, come back to campus, enjoy some of those co common spaces around campus, but we just ask that you not enter into those residential facilities and I would hope you know as a parent that you would understand um, our, our desire to keep that space safe and and I know um, that you as a first-time freshman parent you know you want to um, provide that support for your student I have I have a student entering kindergarten this year and I'm not going to be able to walk him into class so we are all going to have to adjust to some of those things that are, are difficult and maybe not the way that we want them to occur but it is the best thing for our students to keep that area safe. So that's our plans currently for that. Um, another parent asked about dog hall in our chat, um, and that was a question that was sent in to me, is will there be a dog hall this year to assist with move-in? Um, our dog hall is sponsored by our Student Government Association and our Student Activities Office. So we don't ever plan that event. They have been phenomenal in years past to help us with that and get volunteers. Um, and they are currently working on deciding if that is going to be 
if they're going to be able to do that and do that safely um, for the volunteers and for the students and families. So we have not been given an answer on whether that will occur or not. Um, but I will tell you, I'm not sure. I'm, I don't feel hopeful about it. I don't think that it's going to be able to, to happen. Um, but we have not received official word yet. So I can't share that. Um, what will the policy be for students visiting different housing facilities? Um, for instance, when it, will an older sibling who lives off campus be able to visit their younger sibling who lives on campus? I've already mentioned that, but currently, as long as they're a Louisiana Tech student, they can vis visit another student. We ask only one guest per resident and only one guest to enter a bedroom at a time. Um, and so currently they can, like I mentioned, that could change before move in and it just be residential students. But currently, if any student can, visit another student on campus. Um, will the university still allow uh, double occupancy rooms for the fall? If so, um, will the students be required to submit negative test results before moving in? And will they have to undergo periodic testing throughout the quarter? Okay, so will we still allow double occupancy rooms for the fall? Yes. Um, we have most of our rooms are double occupancy, um, unless you're in an apartment where you have a bedroom to yourself. Um, and then we do still have some three person rooms in Adams Aswell Dudley. Um, we have encouraged students to uh, seek other options there, but we are not requiring them to do so. So um, we have been doing that for about a month and a half, I, I think is when we first reached out to our students in Adams Aswell Dudley and offered other options. Um, we do not have plans to test students before moving in, um, and the university currently does not have plans to do periodic testing throughout the quarter. Um, how will community bathrooms be kept disinfected to ensure a safe environment? This is where Mr. Jonikin would have been great to be on the call because he manages all of our custodial and maintenance services. Um, but here is our, our current plan. Um, you know, our community areas of, are of greatest concern within our traditional halls where you have more people utilizing those spaces, just like, you know, this morning I talked to our director of environmental services and, you know, just like those community spaces and classrooms and just making sure that our policies uh, for cleaning and our procedures for cleaning um, meet our CDC guidelines. So we are having those conversations daily. Um, for our community bathrooms, uh, what we are looking at doing currently is that we would assign students to a particular bathroom, um, to a particular shower stall to utilize. Now, um, you and I know that sometimes Sometimes students don't always do what you want them to do. So I know that if a, if a student is assigned to one, they may not use that one. If, it, if someone's already in there, they may use another one. And there's no real way for us to police it, but that is what we are, we are going to assign them to one. Um, we are also gonna provide um, some cleaner that will be in each of those community spaces and will be available to students. And we encourage them to spray down their shower um, prior to they get in the shower and then after they get out. Um, and that, that cleaner is what we are using in all of our, um, our buildings and as we prepare for move in and um, it does kill COVID um, on contact. So we're providing that for students to be able to use in those community spaces of the communal showers and bathrooms. Um, and so we are encouraging them to do that. Our custodial staff cleans those, those um, from top to bottom twice a day. So they'll do that in the mornings once they arrive and then they'll do it in the afternoons before they leave for the day. But they can't go in and clean after every student takes a shower. Um, and so by providing that cleaner for our students, we're hoping that that will, um, that that will help, that they will take some ownership in being able to keep up those areas. Um, as far as our community spaces and our lounges and, you know, our laundry areas and those types of location studies, our custodial staff is cleaning those um, as well uh, daily. We also have an electrostatic fogger that we'll be using in our community spaces. Um, our community spaces will be um, limited with the number of people that can occupy them based on the, the square footage of that location. So we have measured all of those spaces and determined what maximum occupancy is and those signs will be placed upon move-in um, and our furniture will be rearranged. We ask the students not move that but to you know to uh, maintain social distancing you'll notice that that will be rearranged um, and so they are going in and cleaning those. Uh, 
our custodial team normally in a, a normal year will do that five days a week and then on the weekends they'll come in on a Saturday and do like a, a very light clean and pick up trash um, do, ever since we started COVID back in March and um, our responses they've been working seven days a week and so they do come in on Saturdays and Sundays and clean um, those bathroom areas as well as their high touch areas which are doorknobs crash bars those types of things um, surfaces that they're wiping down um, our procedures for COVID positive residents, so quarantine, um, isolation procedures, um, that is something that we're currently uh, uh, in working on. We've actually had, a, um, had some conversations today and meetings about that. We're having some training on that next week, and um, I actually have another meeting tomorrow. So putting a lot of that together with the university, um, with uh, a task force that is going to work with those students who are COVID positive. Um, I guess not really a task force. I think they're calling a care resource team to those students um, that they would receive someone that would um, be their advocate for them and help them as they're managing classes, as they're managing their meals and relocation to quarantine locations. Um, so they'll be well taken care of. They'll have some caring professionals that will be dedicated to them. Um, and then once we have that procedure, um, you know, finalized, approved, put into place, we will make that public. You'll see that probably on our um, coronavirus frequently asked questions page or on the university's coronavirus page. Um, and if you check that recently, I am responsible for Res Life's webpage. I'm not very good with technology, so, but I try to update that frequently asked questions as much as possible because I know you guys have questions and if we can answer them, we will. Um, and, and then we want to be transparent with that. So you'll see that update as, as we make that to, where, to that location. Um, another question was if I'm in a, if a, my student's in a room with two others and no one wants to move. So I'm assuming that it's a three person room and no one wants to move. We're, at this point, we're not, we're not forcing anyone to move out of those three person rooms. We're just offering other options if they want to. Um, and so we, we, um, I've gotten that question a few times. We're not going to force anyone to move out. It won't be like the last person in is the first person out. Um, if, you know, if all three students want to stay in that room, then we are allowing them to do so. We're just encouraging them to 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 move to um, to decrease the density there. Um, another question was um, this families wanting to bring a U-Haul to move in and where should they park? We're only providing one parking spot per resident for move in. Um, you wouldn't believe, but it is hard to keep parking spots marked off as students move in because they'll move cones all over and it's hard for us to keep those spaces. So we might have to fight to keep those spaces all those days. So we can only um, guarantee the one space per resident. Um, if you're bringing another vehicle, you can certainly, you know, trade out vehicles within that parking spot within that hour. Um, but a U-Haul, then you would kind of be on your own to figure out where to park those. Um, I would suggest in the closest parking lot um, that's available. Um, but it, certainly if you plan on bringing that, um, please reach out to us and depending on the location that you are, your students living in, we can try to help you with where it would be closest on that day to help to park, um, to get you closest to the building. Um, let's see. Few more and then we'll let you guys ask questions. Let's see. I know, uh, let's see. This one says, I know the communal areas in the halls will be cleaned multiple times per day. What about the rooms receiving a cleaning um, once summer session is over and prior to fall move in? Um, so great question. All of our rooms on campus will be cleaned prior to our fall move in. Our, um, our apartments, for the most part, we contract cleaning out there. And so we do have a company that comes in and cleans for us in those locations. We just don't have the staffing to be able to do that all prior to our fall move in. Um, but all of even our all of our traditional hall suites, everything will be cleaned prior to move in. Um, our summer students leave uh, August fifteenth, and so um, all of our locations will be cleaned um, and ready to go by August twenty first. Is what we are planning for, and um, that is so that we can guarantee that no one is entering your students' room prior to their move in at least ten to fourteen days 
prior to their move in. So um, that way, um, anything that's living there, you know, it, it won't be by the time your students there. We're not allowing our RA staff to enter into those rooms after that 21st as well. Um, so a lot of things that are going to be done different on our end, but we feel like it's important to provide that for, um, for the residents and to provide that sense of safety. Um, the only way that someone will have entered your room prior to the 10 to 14 days prior to move in is if your roommate moves in early. So if they're part of like a, a band or a Panhellenic um, and they're moving in early, um, then of course they'll be occupying the room early. But other than that, no staff member will be entering those locations. Um, do students have to completely move out between quarters? No, we don't require our students to move out between quarters. Um, we do house students between quarters um, if they if they have that need, and we ask that they sign up. We call it quarter break, so they sign up for to live on campus over quarter break. We typically don't charge anything for that unless they sign up late at the last minute, um, and so we don't have students move out between quarters. They don't have to turn their keys in or anything like that. Um, in a recent post online, a parent mentioned students may not be returning after Thanksgiving and the uni university may be revising the winter and spring calendars to accommodate that change. This person said, can you confirm, deny, or provide more information? I cannot confirm, deny. I don't, we, I have not been um, told any of that information that as far as I know, our academic calendar is, is going to remain the same, is currently the same. So I have not been updated on any changes to our academic calendar. Um, any information on temperature checks prior to entering the dorms? Um, this person said, I know at this time it's not planned, just wonder if it's being considered. Um, I, I don't have any knowledge of that being considered at this time. However, um, you know, it may be, uh, you know, someone above me that may be being talked about, but I don't have any knowledge of there being temperature checks um, prior to move in or prior to entering uh, residential locations on a daily basis. Um, this one says, what kind of router is recommended? Um, Mr. Barnell, will you post the uh, router information that you posted for us last time? Um, I don't know that there's a specific router. Um, Mr. Barnell, do you know? Um, there's no specific router. Uh, the biggest thing is that you make sure to get a router and uh, and not a, uh, I just drew a blank on what I meant. It, make sure it's a router. Some people will I uh, get something bigger than that but typically if you get just go Walmart and spend maybe 20 or 30 dollars like Linksys or something like that um that's some that's usually a good option you don't have to spend a whole lot on a router and they also asked if should each roommate bring in their own or like is one good enough for the entire apartment um can you answer that one yeah, one is good enough for the entire apartment. Uh, the only exception that we sometimes say is that if they're in a four person, maybe having one for downstairs and one for upstairs just because the the range, but they'll just depend on the router that you get. And Mr. Barnell, since we're asking about routers, um, a parent just asked, does a router need a modem or do we provide the modem? Um, you don't need a modem. And that's the other one I was thinking of. Do not get a modem, get a router. Because if you get a modem, it's going to uh, throw off the system. And uh, we've had it where it, it stopped, stopped everyone's internet from working. So make sure it's a router. We keep Mr. Barnell around because he knows the technological questions. <laughs> or <laughs> answers, I guess, to our questions. Um, thank you. Are beds in Harper Suites already risen? Or do we need bed risers? So. Um, in Harper, Harper's in our Legacy Park Apartments. So in Legacy Park Apartments, which are Harper and Pierce, and then our Aswell, get it right, Aswell and Dudley Suites, um, they all have lofted beds. And so they are already um, risen. So you do not need bed risers for those. Um, and then this final question I had submitted, and then we'll get some of your questions, is, um, a question in relation to uh, Jenkins, two bedroom, one bath apartments for two people. Um, this student's asking, or our parent is asking, is it a single level or a winding staircase? Um, on the YouTube page, I assume on our 360 video, they see a winding staircase. Our winding staircase is, um, you'll find those in our four bedroom apartments at University Park and Park Place. Um, we do have 
two or three or four like loft apartments within a university park or park place, um, which are really different because they're on the first floor, but they are, um, or no, they're on the second floor, but the students live on the, on the second, like they have a winding staircase in those. Um, like I said, it's just random apartments. Um, and I don't even know, Miss Emily, do you know where those are? The loft? I don't either. I don't, they're just, yeah, I don't know where they're at. They're usually on the end, um, of Park Place. Our architects did us no favors in, <laughs> in, in, uh, and making everything easy and similar. Um, so there are a couple of those, so I don't wanna lie and say there's no staircases in those two bedrooms, but there are like three or four of them where it is the case. But for the most part, the staircases are in our four bedrooms. Okay, that is all of the questions that were submitted prior to the meeting. So, and I know Ms. Lindsay has been answering a lot by chat and I have not been reading those to keep up. So um, if I, if I copied some of your questions and re-answered them, then forgive me. But let's let you guys ask some questions. Um, and if you would either, I guess, raise your hand if you would like to ask a question on here and then we'll try to unmute you or you can unmute yourself. Okay, Miss Jennifer, go ahead. Okay, let's say for instance, we go back to phase one or whatever, I don't know. And we have, they have to do classes online. Do they still get to move into the apartments or would it be strictly no living on campus, online classes only? I mean, let's say if we had to revert back to that, you know, do you know? You yeah, sure. So um, we, so even in spring quarter, we housed about 350 students on campus. So we gave them the option to move home or encourage them to move home is, was our wording encouraged, but we still housed uh, a good bit on campus. Um, and so as far as I know and what I've been told, we would provide housing regardless of if there is a decision to, to be made to be all online. But I have, That's good. Uh, I have not heard that, you know, of course, it, it really does depend, I guess, on what phase we're in as a state, and we really don't know. Um, but right now, um, Dr. Geis is really pushing for us to be back face-to-face -face as much as possible. Um, but of course, our top priority is the health and safety of the students and, and our faculty and staff. So, yes. Okay. Ms. Pamela Schooley has raised her hand. I just wanted to know the password, um, username and password for the site we're going to log on to is Wednesday one more time. How, how is it just the first part of their email address? Yes, it's not going to be the at law tech. It's just going to be, is that right? They don't have to do that for Moodle. They just sign in with the those letters and numbers. For Moodle, you just sign in with your initials and the numbers. Right. So that's going to be your sign in for the appointment. Ms. Pamela, I hope that answered your question. It's a new process for us too. Um, and we're hoping we don't cause a lot of confusion since it's a new site to go to and a different login. Um, but it will be better for us once we can get it as the same login as your Louisiana Tech email and Moodle. Um, someone like physically raised a hand. Ms. Stacy, yes. Uh, we what is the process going to be for students to move in early for rush? They were, we were told by in the Panhellenic meeting that that would have to be scheduled with Res Life. Okay, so yeah, I've been in meetings with Miss Ashley Allen, who manages our Panhellenic group, our advisor, and then also Taylor, who is the uh, president. And um, what I've been told is that they will not be asked to move in any earlier than that Friday, September 4th. I'm being told that they will have their first, their first meetings will be virtual. Um, Do you get that, ready? And that they won't necessarily be asked to be on campus until um, either Sunday or Monday. And so they are, um, they, I have, I've let them know kind of the process and they're going to request from those uh, girls going through Rush to uh, schedule their move-in for Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Thank you. You're welcome. I didn't catch that. Try to... Who else had a question? How much extra is it to move in before the 7th of September? Um, it's, 
it's nothing extra. If you move in on September 4th, um, there's nothing extra. As long as you move in within our days of move in, it is not any extra as far as pay. Pay more. That makes sense. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Who's oh, okay? What about student athletes? Um, it, it was told, or uh, my daughter had said, like she's a cheerleader. Do they get to move in earlier, or are there special times, or are they just like? Well, Miss Spoon can answer that. She works with our cheerleaders. Hey, um, I'm actually one of the coaches. Um, we so our schedule right now is for them to come in um, about a week early. Um, because we do practice, um, but all of our other practices this summer have been canceled, so it's still kind of up in the air. <laughs> um, I will let them know um, in our cheer group meeting um, about check-ins and things like that, and we'll get her taken care of, okay? All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. One of the parents asked in the um, chat box that I don't know if everybody's got a chance to read it, but we did move in about a little under 100 students yesterday for um, some programs that we have going on in our second session of summer school. And our question was, can their student leave their belongings in the room that they've moved into yesterday? So um, when our summer school, right before it ends, we'll give them their fall assignment and give them access to that building. So they can go ahead and move those things into that location and then go ahead and go home for the rest of summer. So they won't have to take everything back and move back in. They can move to their new location and just leave it and then go home and enjoy a nice little month long break or so. Um, thank you, Ms. Lindsay. Someone asked about um, a router. Um, no, a router, you can bring a router for the traditional halls or the apartments or the suites. It doesn't matter as far as location wise, you can bring a router for any of those locations. Uh, this Miss Ashlyn, where are you? Um, didn't you attend parent orientation? Your name. I was did. Mm -hmm. Um, so you asked when we check in, will we be, will we be reminded which bed they're assigned to? Yeah, we we picked it, but for some, you know, we our memories are not that great on whether it's the wall or the door. So just to be reminded when we get there. Now, is this in a traditional hall or is this in an apartment? It's the suites, um, as well suites. Okay, suites. So the, I know this is gonna seem confusing, but within our housing portal, we have to have those numbered, but they're not actually numbered in the room. So um, the, the actual beds in the room are not numbered. Um, they can choose that or switch that up as they want. The only difference in that would be in our apartments where they're assigned per bedroom. Okay. So they can pick whenever they get there, which one they want. Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. Or Thank move you. Them around, however, yes, ma'am. Okay. And I, I do have a question sure. um, for the TV. I know it was mentioned at the last, um, the last one you guys had, but the mm -hmm. size TVs. It was thirty-two, thirty-seven. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I think um, up to like a forty-inch would be just fine for in the buildings, um, in the rooms. Okay. I think Mr. Speed helped answer that question for us, but I want to say anything between 35, 40 would be, would be just great. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We had a parent ask about tech IDs. Um, so that's actually going to be there in the traditional residence hall and in the suites. That's how they get into the building. Um, and they asked if they're not going to get that before moving day since we're not having an in-person orientation. Um, and as Casey interjected, I'm wrong, but I know that they will be open on that Friday of move-in day, that first day that we start move-in day, and some parents have asked if they could come to campus prior to that. I would actually contact the Tech Express office and ask if they're accepting off-campus visitors to go ahead and have those IDs made um, if you're local or if it's not too far out of the way. I know some of our parents might come from very far away and that's not feasible, um, but from my understanding, we um, that office will only be closed on Labor Day. Is that correct? Are they going right. to be... Correct. Um, are they going to be open over the weekend? 
Yes, so they'll be open. Our Tech Express office will be open on Friday, Saturday, Sunday of move in um, from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. So um, if you select a time slot, I think our latest time slot is four to five. If you select that time slot, I would encourage your student to go ahead and go to the Tech Express office before they move in and pick that up um, since they do close at five. Um, but that other than that, I would go ahead and just move in and then go afterwards, if that makes sense. Um, that is also the way that they will eat while they're here on campus. And so they'll want to get that their first day here because um, they will need that to eat. Our locations for move in. So um, Airmark has graciously opened Chick-fil-A for us on Friday, as well as the tech table. And um, on Saturday and Sunday, the tech table will be open. And then on Monday is the only day when it will be closed. So there will be no food locations open on Monday on campus due to the holiday. Um, and so the Tech Express office will not be open that day either since the students will not be able to, you know, will not have need of their ID. So I guess for those students who may be checking into um, locations that may need uh, access to buildings on those days, um, we'll, we'll work out another plan. Um, I'm trying to read some questions here. Um, one parent asked about the older dorms not having the three pronged outlets. Um, I don't know that we don't. Casey, do you have an answer for that? Uh, you mean like what building? Yeah, they're asking about Adams in particular, and I think Adams has three prongs. Yeah, I think so. The only one that I know that doesn't is maybe Graham. Mm -hmm. um, but don't quote me on that. I don't know, but I know Graham is usually the issue there with having to do the little converter uh, things. Um, Tech, somebody asked where Tech Express is located. Tech Express is located at the Student Center. So um, when you enter the Student Center side closest to where Harper Hall is currently, although it is disappearing very rapidly um, with demo, um, when you enter in through that side, you'll see the Tech Express office. It is a very small office, and so they will probably only be able to take one to two in their office. Um, so you may you know, have to wait outside um, before you can enter that location. Um, can they come um, get their IDs before, um, if we live close by, um, yeah, I believe they would be able to come get their IDs. I would contact the Tech Express office and just make sure we're all still working remotely. Some hours, we do have some staff in the office during certain hours during the day, and they may, may be that way as well. I'm not sure when they'll officially be back on campus. You may want to check with them. As far as could your daughter come look at the room, we're not allowing any students to enter. Again, those locations 10 to 14 days prior to, so we, we don't have any availability to tour locations right now. Um, we do have our summer students living on campus, so we don't want um, any exposure in those locations as well, um, but we won't be able to allow people into the buildings before their, their booked move-in time. If you want to, um, you know, Mr. Barnell's been great with working with some of our staff. If you want a staff member to maybe call you on a Zoom or a FaceTime and maybe show you around the room, um, we do have some staff members here over the summer that are working that are looking for things to do, and they would be more than happy to, to set up that with you. If you want to reach out to Mr. Barnell, he can put you in touch with a staff member. Um, I know that's not the ideal setting, but we can certainly do that um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis to help you at least get a view of what it will look like. Another parent asked about how to get their parking decal. Um, Ms. Casey, is there an updated way of how they're doing that with the police? I do not know. Um, Chief said last week uh, when I was sitting in on a session last week where he was presenting to parents from orientation that they were going to be working on um, an alternate way to get their decals um, the week of the, the week of move in um, because again their office is very small as well so they may uh, work something out where it's in the student center but they'll get that information to students they typically they won't give um, out any traffic tickets uh, within the first week or two of classes just to give students, um, you know, the opportunity to go and get those decals and get those put on um, and to learn, you know, where they can park and where they can't. So um, Ms. Casey? You, should hear, you should hear more from them soon. Yes, ma'am. 
Um, just one, I'm not sure if you were in the session last week, whenever he was doing that session, he also said that if you paid, um, cause we asked the question cause we had to pay beforehand. Um, mm -hmm. we sent in the money and the application that they would be mailing them out at the end of July mm -hmm. if you paid ahead of time. So that's a possibility too, he said. Perfect. Thank you, Miss Ashland. Would you like a job? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're welcome. I don't think I caught that. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I don't know which ones Miss Lindsay and Mr. Barnell are answering through the chat, but if students within apartments want to change rooms, like one wants to be upstairs and the other wants to be downstairs, can they change or pick rooms at check-in? They can certainly change um, the keys, like where they are assigned at move-in is the key that they will receive. Okay, and that is what we have in our records. So if they decide to switch on their own, we ask that they notify us so that we can uh, maintain official records of which bedroom they're living in and that we can help, you know, just make sure that those keys get switched because if your student signed out a key for the third bedroom and let's say checkout comes and we don't have a key for that bedroom, then the student that we assigned it to will be held responsible. So we just want to make sure that we keep accurate records, but they can certainly switch within themselves. Um, where would you recommend? Okay, so another parent asked, so on, on Labor Day, they are on their own as far as food. Where would you recommend students eat when the campus is closed? Are there certain places that will accept their um, meal cards? So um, typically on those days, we have events held on campus where, you know, groups are giving out food. Um, and we're not going to be able to do that this year, more than likely due to what phase we're going to be in. So, um, Closest to campus, you're going to see uh, Sonic, um, Popeyes, you guys help me, um, Griff's is close to campus. Most of the pizza places um, in town. Um, Subway. Jimmy Chick -fil -A. Chick -fil -A. <laughs> Subway. There's a Walmart Subway. right across the street from my Graham and, and Legacy Park. Yeah. And I'll need to check, I mean, a lot, some of those places you can um, use your uh, Tech Express to pay. Um, I'm not sure if the Tech Express will be loaded on that Monday. So let me, I'll need to check on that because it would be a great thing if it could be available on that Monday so that you could eat at some of those locations off campus. And but Mr. there Bar are several options within walking distance. Mr. Barnell posted in the chat a list on, that's on our Tech website of all the places that will accept your Tech Express. So if you want to do something nice for your student, give them a little extra. Tech Express so they can go to some fast food. Hey, Mr. Speed. <laughs> um, one parent asked if restaurants in Reston deliver. I think at this time, we only have um, our pizza places that deliver, Jimmy John's, and I don't know if we still have a meal delivery service, Grubhub or anything like that. I think we did at one point, but I don't know that we have it anymore. Um, and I don't think, I don't know if you can order with your Tech Express and pay. I'm not 100% sure of that. That might be a question we have to ask. Um, I got an advertisement for DoorDash in my um, mail. Um, so I do think DoorDash is local now. Um, I'm not sure about the Tech Express, if you can pay using Tech Express. Will Tech Table be as it is supposed to be? I like that, as it is supposed to be, or will it be grab and go like spring quarter? It is planned to be um, as normal as possible, um, dependent upon what phase we're in as to how we have to limit um, the capacity of students uh, that are actually staying in tech table and eating. Um, but I feel certain they will provide some grab and go options as well. Um, and then they always give students the options to, you know, have the, t the to go plates. Um, and so students can go and get their food and then leave if they want to. But I know our second session, some summer students are here and they're allowing them to eat in as well. They're just trying, they're, they have the furniture moved around to maintain the distancing there. Um, we had a parent ask about, um, oh gosh, I lost it, meal plans. Um, if students in University Park apartments have to have a meal plan, every student that lives on campus has to have a meal plan. It's a requirement um, unless you have a medical diagnosis that requires you to not. Um, and you would have to work that out with the food services office um, and the Tech Express office. And another parent asked about bad weather. 
I'm gonna let Miss um, Casey and her expertise. If bad weather, if they show, I don't up, know much about weather. So. <laughs> if the, if it's storming while moving, is there's a, a game a different plan? And I don't think that there is a different plan. I think we would all just get soaked and enjoy a nice cool off. Yeah, no, we don't have a different plan if it is raining. Do but we will pray that it doesn't. We've had good weather the last couple of years. So do we have to have a Tech Express card? So um, the actual Tech Express card is your student ID. So that is like gold. Um, and you will use your student ID to gain access to your building. If you're in um, you know, traditional hall or suites, you will use it to eat. You could use it off campus for your Tech Express. Now Tech Express is different from declining balance. Declining balance goes with your meal plan and you can use that only on campus at retail locations. So like the McAllister's, the Chick-fil-A, um, the pod that's there, the sushi place, like those are places that you can use your declining balance. That's tied to your account with food services. The Tech Express is just dollars that you add to the card um, where students can use that to purchase different things around campus. So they can use that in a vending machine that takes Tech Express around campus. They can use it in the bookstore to pay for books or to buy um, you know sweatshirt or anything like that and they can also use it to um, purchase meals off campus at those locations so it's truly up to you as to how much Tech Express dollars you want to add to their card and you would add that through the Tech Express office you also can wash your clothes with it mm -hmm. um, wipe your Tech Express um, to wash your laundry in the traditional residence halls and in our UP phase one apartments, University Park phase one apartments, I'm sorry. Uh, um, okay, I've been trying to, for over six months to get our meal plan issue resolved, still not done, and we keep getting delayed on a decision. Um, where is this? Miss Robin, or um, if you'll just, if you, you could email me, I, I don't deal with the meal plan. Hey, I'm here. Yeah, I've actually been talking with them and I emailed them this summer and Miss Katie was laid off and the people, they wanted to meet with us face to face during orientation and of course that didn't happen and I just, I've, I've been trying to get it resolved and I can't get anybody to make a decision. And okay. so that's what, what my issue is. So tell me what my next step is because I don't want to cause a problem. I'm just trying to get it resolved so we know how to plan appropriately. Yeah, absolutely. So I would encourage you to speak to Mr. Robert Hogue, who is our director. That's, that is that's, who I've been talking with. That's who I've been talking with. Okay, and, and you I still can't get a decision made. Mm -mm. Okay, will you email me? I will. Uh, just email me. Um, you don't have to go into the specifics of what you're asking because they will have already known. But then I can kind of, I guess, move it up the chain a little bit and try to see okay. if we can get That would be great. I appreciate that so much. Thank you, Casey. Uh, absolutely. Thank and you. I'll put my email in here. I, I see it on your window. Thank oh, you. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, Thank you. Thank you. Again, I'm taking you know when you're down. coming to? Do you know when you're coming to orientation? Uh, he is online orientation next week. So okay. he's the week of the 20th. Yes, sir. Next week. Okay. I know they will be a part of that. So you may okay. have an opportunity then as well. Okay. Okay. That would be great. Cause, cause I just, I, I don't know how to handle it. Cause it's just, we're just in a weird time and I'm trying to make it as easy as possible, but I do need to get an answer. So we know what to do. Thank you. I appreciate sure. you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I, um, I would imagine a lot of it has to do if they have switched dietitians. A lot of it has to do with that. But you are talking to the right person. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I was reading uh, through the chat things, and somewhere I read it said they're allowing uh, tours of the dorm rooms this summer. We are not allowing tours of the dorm room. Um, so if one of us typed that answer, then I apologize, but we're not allowing anyone to come into our buildings. Um, I think Ms. Casey may have touched base that our summer session students are not even allowed to have off-campus visitors. We're really encouraging um, that they only visit with the people that are here um, right now. Um, we're trying to really cut down on the traffic that's coming through campus so that we can maintain a safe environment for not only our students that live here, but also our staff members who are working on campus as well. Okay, that's why I, I kind of saw that conflict and I, I wasn't, it was a little confused and not unless I misinterpreted what I was reading on the thing. I apologize. Um, it, I think I typed that answer. 
If I put we are, I did not mean that. I'm so sorry. Okay, yeah, because I was like, cool, we can get to go up this weekend and look at the room. <laughs> Miss I'm Emily sorry. will take you right great. up there. <laughs> Miss Emily okay, will uh, take you right there. <laughs> so, like, quickly, uh, we drive in, and I will assign time for the hour, and we unload everything. Um, and because I guess we can't go into the rooms, like, if we need something from the Walmart, can – do we have to do everything that hour or we can go to the Walmart and come back later or maybe even go the next day to Walmart and go back? We, okay, so you'll have that hour, um, that hour to come and check in with us and you have the hour for that parking spot. So you can certainly, uh, after that, use whatever time you need to get the room ready. Um, you can, you know, go to Walmart and purchase what you need and come back. Um, but once your student moves in on that day, we ask that you not return um, after that. So just for that day that they are um, actually moving in, if that makes, okay. if that helps answer your question. Yes, ma'am. So we got to just get it all done in a day and kiss and goodbye, cry and go home. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Did you say him? Yes, sir. Kiss him embarrasses him. We gonna be in the room. In the room. She's not allowed to be in the community area or in the hallway, so she's gonna do that in the room. We'll this take real good care of him. I promise. This is where my self-proclaimed degree in momology has to come in. <laughs> I need it. He, he might not, but I'm going to need it. <laughs> He's going to be okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh, someone asked, can you explain declining balance? Well, I can. It probably won't be very well <laughs> since that's not my area, but declining balance um, is tied to your meal plan. So depending upon the meal plan that you have, there's an amount of declining balance. I don't even know what those amounts are. Mr. Barnell, Ms. Lindsay, do you know? Off the top of my head. Um, so I don't know. You could have... 200. Do what? I think it's 250 and 400. Okay, so you could have, okay, thank you, sir. So you could have 250 or 400 declining balance based on your meal plan. So those are 250, those are dollars that you can use during the quarter at um, retail locations such as Chick-fil-A, um, the Java City for coffee, Sushi Place, Burger Studio, The Pod, um, McAllister's. So retail locations within um, the food complex. Um, and I mean, you know, the meals, the meals per week, the 10 meals per week you use in the tech table. So you would swipe the card and it would take a, a meal off of each time as you go in the tech table. Um, but then, you know, one day they may just want to splurge and do Chick-fil-A for dinner instead of the tech table. And so that declining balance is what they would use. Um, and I would suggest that they use it wisely. We do have some students that use all their declining balance within the first two to three weeks. <laughs> and then they don't have anything after that. So just spread it out. Oh, Ms. Jennifer said it's 375, 225, 400, order from the cheapest meal plan to the highest. Yeah, it does depend on the meal plan. I just don't know the specifics. Thank you. Okay, um, how much are the parking stickers? So the parking decals are $100 for the year, for the entire year. We were able to email the Tech Express office to add the meal plan, yes, or to change the meal plan. You know, um, there is a default meal plan, um, but if you want to change it to a different meals uh, amount of meals per week, then you can certainly do that as well. Ms. Kristen asked, can you add more to declining balance? And that's a set amount that you cannot add to, but you can add Tech Express money at any time throughout the quarter. And um, you can use Tech Express very similar to declining balance. Like if you, if they run out of declining balance and they only eat Chick-fil-A or McAllister's, you can load their card with more money and they can still use that Tech Express card as not real money, I guess, if that makes sense. <laughs> they call it not real money. Oh, and a parent asked about, um, are, do you like um, declining balance, do you use it all for that quarter? Um, your declining balance carries over every uh, quarter. 
um, until spring quarter. So you would need to use it all before they leave spring quarter, if that makes sense. So they can carry over dollars. Um, your meal plans, however, do not. So if you get the 10 meals per week and um, your student only eats six that week, then they don't get to add those extra meals to the next week. If that makes sense. Is Tech Express offered with every meal plan option or is that something separate? It is something separate. Tech Express is separate. It's not tied to your meal plan. It's basically like a credit card. So you just like add money to it or maybe a debit card, but you add money to it um, and then you can use it, you know, uh, whenever you want, but it is separate from your meal plan. Does everyone get Tech Express since it's linked to their ID? Um, no, you would put the, the Tech Express dollars on there. Um, it is on your ID and everyone can certainly get Tech Express, but it is dependent upon if you add that uh, money to the, to the card. Do they pay for parking at their orientation? Mr. Speed, do you know if the paying for their parking decal is part of the orientation? I'm not sure. I believe that they're going to have an option. They're going to provide an option where you can actually send that in. Um, uh, I did orientation. Almost positive that's what it is. Oh. I Angela. did orientation this past week, and um, we didn't like talk a lot about it. But I think in one of the emails that they had sent out to us, they had like a link of a form that you can fill out. So I could not find the email address to send the form to. Um, they had that form to fill out for getting your parking decal. Um, but I guess, I don't know. I don't know where it would go or like where the money is supposed to or how you give it to them, but that's like an option to fill out. There was an address on the form when you filled it out um, so you could mail your application and your check-in. All right, thank you. You're welcome. So um, Ms. Candace, Ms. Candace Courtney asked um, on move-in day, do we need to check in at a specific location um, before going to our sign spot? Your student will get all of that information prior to um, move-in. There will be specific locations that you will find our staff located at um, for you to get your keys and to do your QR code um, that Mr. Barnell was talking about. Um, so all that information will be sent out to your students. So just be, tell your student to be really mindful and diligent in checking their tech email. Um, and we recommend diligence and mindful of checking their tech email from here on out. <laughs> it's got lots of good information in it. Um, speaking of tech email, my son has been trying to download his email on his phone and it won't work. Um, we can give you the help desk number because we're not the most technological crew here on campus. <laughs> Yeah, we followed the little thing where it says how to download on the phone and we followed it and it's just it just won't work oh goodness yeah i yeah mr becker we're not any good with that i, I email the help desk help desk at latech.edu and see if they can assist you with getting that set up on the phone okay they're, also their number is oh, let, let me talk their number is two five seven five three zero zero as well because I'm, I'm not real um, good with that. So they may have to talk me through it or yeah. talk us through it since we can't get it done. Same. <laughs> Thank you. A parent asked about the hours of the tech table. Um, so right now the hours, obviously these may be different in the fall, but right now the hours are 11 to 1.30 and 4 to 6.30. So they do close in between meals um, to sanitize the building. Yeah, I'm not certain of the fall hours. Of course, they'll be offering breakfast during the fall where um, during the summer they're not. Their hours are a little different because we have so few students on campus right now. Um, but like Ms. Lindsay said, they will probably, um, I would think, update their hours where they do have some closed down time where they are cleaning in between. Um, so you should you would probably get that information during orientation. Um, when your student signs up for orientation, you'll also have the option to do a parent orientation. And I highly recommend that because you'll get to see our beautiful faces again. <laughs> um, a lot of the same info too, but, um, but it gives you an opportunity to uh, hear from different areas on campus and air, our food service, um, Airmark is one of those. And um, they, should, they would share that information as far as hours. And then um, someone asked about, is it recorded? Because they were um, came in late. We are recording this. I should have probably told you guys at the beginning, but we are recording this um, and we hope to um, 
put it out there for uh, parents to listen to um, by the end of the week. Um, what building is the laundry room in UP1? Um, there's one in Sutton and then there the Sutton laundry mat and then there's one in Thatcher. Um, a mom asked how the campus is policed with residential life or the dorms policed at night in case students are out late studying for study sessions and other gatherings. Um, our campus is, was actually voted one of the safest. Um, I have lived on campus with my family for four years and have had no issues. Um, but we do have a golf cart service that runs in the evenings. Now it did in the, in the normal times. I'm assuming that we'll do something similar if we can um, based on the governor's ruling. Um, but we do have golf cart services that will take people um, to their housing locations from the library, um, from Lambright, from other areas. So that is a safety measure that we have in place. Our traditional residence halls have walkers um, that are hired by the police department that are students that walk the halls throughout various times of the night. And you also have a student on staff for us from Res Life that is working um, until midnight at the front desk in our traditional residence halls, as well as in our suites, they rotate in on that. So um, we're very aware of what's going on in our buildings and it's tracked easily. And um, so I would say that we're, we're pretty covered with coverage um, of campus. Um, thank you, Ms. Lindsay. Another parent asked, what day is parent orientation for session two and where do we register? So session two will be um, next week and you should hear from our orientation team as far as parent orientation and how to register. I believe they send those out on either like Friday this week or Sunday prior to the next. Um, and uh, parent orientation it has a couple of uh nighttime zooms so i uh, believe there is a tuesday and a wednesday night zoom and then thursday afternoon um and so definitely encourage you to be available as much as possible and if you can't be there then they will um, email you those sessions recordings as well um mr barnell could you put in the orientation email address so that um, they could make sure to reach out to them to get registered Indeed. for that second orientation, just in case. Um, Ms. Lakeisha, will they be allowed to go home on the weekends? I'm not sure. No, I'm just thinking they can go home on the weekends. Um, currently, we don't have anything in place to keep them um, here um, over the weekends. And I know we had a fair amount of questions about dog call and um, my husband is actually the advisor of the group that puts on dog call. So I did ask him if they'd made any headway. Um, and he said that they are planning to have limited assistance available that is dependent on the governor's ordinance. And so it will probably um, be dependent on state recommendations and mandates for gathering size, as well as probably an appointment based model. Um, so when that information gets released, be looking on that from um, your SGA president, Mr. Zach Little, and we will advertise as we know more information, but he just wanted to, to let you guys know that they are still having some pretty thorough conversations um, with administration to let them know what's the best thing for our students as well as for our student organizations that will actually be moving students in. Thank you. Um, someone asked about when orientation comes in August, do I have to be online all day or is it just certain times? So our students have a different module for orientation. They'll go through their Moodle online course um, that they can do um, on their own at their convenience. Um, Angela could probably tell us about that. <laughs> um, and how was it? Um, okay, um, so for orientation, it wasn't that bad. In fact, I would say like, it really only took a look like it didn't take like the full like time that they gave us for most of the stuff like you get like the Moodle thing on Monday on Monday and then you basically have until Thursday um to do it you meet like but it's all at like specific times and like the Moodle course for me because like I'm kind of slower it took me like two hours to do but most people said it took like their kid like an hour to do um so 
Yeah. If you're, uh, I will say this though, if your college, if your college, if your child is in College of Engineering and Sciences, um, I would recommend like maybe trying to get like talk to someone like more specifically because the way that they did it, we didn't have like personal advisors. So I would print out like your curriculum sheet and stuff like that and try and be like prepared, I guess. I don't know. That's really, but it was fine. It was fun. So you won't have to be like online all day. They'll just give you specific times. Thank you. Yeah, College of Engineering and Science do their advising a little bit different um, because of the amount of students that they have. Um, and then if you're asking about parent orientation, so that, um, like I mentioned, on Tuesday and Wednesday of that week, they have evening sessions. One is dealing with like comptroller and financial aid. And then Wednesday night, that was Tuesday night. Wednesday night is dealing like with safety and health concerns. So a lot of, you know, COVID response, a lot of, um, you know, our chief of police is on there. Um, and then on Thursday, you'll hear from a variety of areas on campus as far as student affairs. So, um, you know, food service, res life, um, you'll hear from our student activities. You'll be able to do Zoom rooms, so very similar to this, where you can just go in and ask questions. Um, our our comptroller's office, registrar. Um, so it is a variety of times for our parents because we do know that some, you know, will still be working even during those weeks. Stacy, yes, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, this is Ann Pew. We did orientation last week as well, and I, I would just make a recommendation. <laughs> to other parents who haven't been through orientation yet. This is my first um, rodeo with a college freshman. And I, I did not understand that she could actually get the advising before Thursday. And so she was on the advising call while I was on the call with the parent, the parent led Zoom call. So we were both in one room. She's trying to get information and I'm trying to get information for two completely different things. So I would just say that, you know, I, I was trying very hard not to helicopter her through the week, but it probably would have been helpful to drive her a little more earlier in the week to get the guidance that she needed before she could actually schedule her classes. Thank you for that insight. And I will tell you that the, it's all new to us as far as the online piece of orientation. So I think we've learned a lot too from our first session. Um, so oh, we're doing a debrief of that tomorrow. Helpful. I mean, it has been, there, there hasn't been a question asked that has gone unanswered. I, I, I have no complaints in that area. It's just from a new parent perspective. It was, um, it was a lot. So um, just, that might be it's, helpful. It's, it's, it is I, a lot. <laughs> And, and I'll chime in a little bit, um, and this is this is one of those areas, and, and understand, I, I'm speaking as an administrator, and I've, I've been working in this capacity for 28 years, but I'm also speaking from a parental standpoint, and especially when it comes to advising, because realize that the advising they have now is not going to be the advising they have in the fall or the winter. They're going to have their own advisor assigned. This is, this is orientation, and even if they were in a face-to-face -face orientation, it would be very similar. So there would still be some questions, and there would still be some things that are a little bit uncertain. So as far as the preparation, um, you know, if they know their major, it is good to go in there and get a curriculum sheet because you can, you can download those online. You can go to the website, and normally you can find those um, as Ms. Ms. Ingram said, and the young lady who went to orientation last week, engineering is very structured, it's, it's blocked. So a lot of, basically you just have one class that you're going to take that's going to be anything other than that normal engineering curriculum, unless possibly you have to start in a um, lower level math or, or anything um, like that. So just be patient with the process. Um, but even if you, it would have been worse if you were here on campus because the parents literally would have been in one building and the students would have been elsewhere. And so this is one of the things I kind of warned my colleague who, um, who is over orientation that I kind of knew that parents would want to kind of hoover, especially during certain times. And now we've figured out that registration is one of them. So just 
kind of be patient with the process. Um, it's just, it, it's one of those things that this, when you're, when you're registering all students at one time, it's just going to be a little bit different than when they go in to an actual session. Um, it's going to be really unique for them in the fall quarter. And I teach the FYE class, or I have in the past it's really unique for them in the fall because they realize how much was done for them when they came to orientation. When they get into the fall, they're going to realize that they're going to have to go in, sit down at that computer, actually put in those call numbers and actually see if that class is available. So it's a little bit more difficult, but it's, it's a part of that navigation process that all those freshmen, um, they're going to be on that path. The good thing about it is they always have people who are going to be willing to reach out and help them and, and assist them in whatever way we can. And it is a lot of information, as Miss Ann said. You'll, <laughs> but hey, that's not any different than if you were here on campus. By Thursday, when we get to talk to parents, it is like glassed over eyes, like we are overwhelmed. So it's just, it's just part of it. We know you're getting a lot of information. So, and I know you're getting information tonight. And please feel free to email any of us if you think of something after, and you're like, I wish I would have asked this. Um, you know, uh, I do my best. To, I'm a little OCD about my email, um, and so I try to get everything answered very timely. Anything else? I think we're kind of winding down, but we want to be able to answer any remaining questions. I have a quick question. Yes, ma'am. Um, would I reach out to like Ms. Carter or Ms. Peel if I have a question about my son's um, FYE class? It's, would I be reaching out to them or to someone in his college? If you had a, sure, if you had a question about the FYE class, I would reach out to Ms. Carter. Um, she is our director of first year experience and she um, kind of oversees all of those FYE courses. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, when do scholarships show up in your online account? I do. I, I I'm think not it's sure. Purge date. Um, you should have gotten like an award package, and so maybe that process has already happened for you. But if you have any questions about when that stuff will be posted or anything like that. You can reach out to our financial aid office. They even have a chat feature on their website, their portion of our website. Um, that's super beneficial for parents to, to talk to. Um, and then another parent asked if everybody had to take the placement test regardless of their ACT or SAT um, scores. Mr. Speed, do you know the answer to that? I don't know anything about placement tests. Don't. No, normally that's um, when they're looking for something specific. So everyone should not have to take that test. So if they've been directed to take that test, it's probably because they're trying to see if they can test into a certain um, uh, certain class or they're trying to see what particular level of class they, they would put them in, especially if it's math related or any of the, the STEM majors. Ms. Michelle just posted that um they said that they would be posting most of that stuff at the end of the month. So I, I would look maybe at the end of the month. The, the first purge won't happen until August 31st at 5 p.m. And if you're not sure what purge is, it means if you haven't paid for your classes and confirmed your schedule, your classes will um, disappear. They purge them from the system. I love when our parents answer other questions, other people's questions. Information that we pick up. Is there information that needs to be filled out before orientation? Where can I get a list of that information needed? I would reach out to our orientation team. Um, their email is orientation at latech.edu um, and see what type of information you would need ahead of time. Ms. Kristen, if you're looking to see if they have your ACT score, I would reach out to the admissions office. Um, and that that's... They would be the one to tell us most up-to-date ACT scores and, and if they got your last information. I did have a question about um, a roommate. If you are, um, if you're unsure if you have a roommate assigned to your space or how you can figure out their name, that is in the housing portal. You should be able to see that. 
um, when you see your assignment to your location, you should be able to see all of the students assigned there, be able to click there and see their profile and then be able to send them a message. If you have any questions um, or you're uncertain, just email one of us and we can look it up. And my kids are getting out of control if you can hear them in the background. <laughs> I apologize. Okay, any, anything last minute? Oh, Kirkland is fantastic. We love him, we're gonna keep him. Thank you, Miss Christina. We'll let him know that you adore him as well. <laughs> I just saw something from someone I'm trying to. Thank you for all the thank yous. Um, yeah, oh, thank you from, Yes, so you're in Caddo school, so you know how it is to navigate a safe plan. And once you think you have that figured out, then there's 10 other things that you need to think about. So um, I have five children and we have no idea what our school system is gonna look like yet, but I feel for those people making those decisions because we, we have been thinking about it nonstop ourselves. So just be patient with us. Please don't be afraid to ask us questions. It may be something that we need to think about or hear your point of view and that is, what we are we are open to thank you all for spending some time with us um our emails are posted in the chat we will have this uh recording um out by the end of this week hopefully where other people can listen in and please feel free to send us any questions that you might have afterwards we sure appreciate you sending your students to your babies although mr speed says not to use that thank you for sending your babies to to live on campus with us in the fall we promise to take good care of them so Thank you all. We'll see you again one more time before move in is our plan. We hope to do another one in August, but unless we see you at parent orientation before then. We appreciate you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. You can't call them your babies unless you can pick them up and rock them. <laughs> now, now, Mr. Speed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I just made it.